So in this video, we're actually going to look at how to solve one and two step equations. Now, I know most of you have solved one and two step equations before. So this is more a lesson on how I need you to show your work and how um, I need you to check your work and how I need you to write your solution. So let's get started. And uh, there are going to be five examples, one for each of the properties of equality, and then one that's a two step equation. Okay, so let's start with the one-steppers. Let's start with something like x divided by 7 equals negative 2. All right, so when I show you an equation where x has been divided, I'm more likely to write it as a fraction with the vinculum as opposed to using the old school division symbol, okay? So I need to figure out and what's going on with x because my job is to undo it. So in this equation, x has been divided by 7. So my job now is to undo that by multiplying both sides by 7. And here's how you show multiply both sides by 7. You take the entire side, you put it in parentheses, and then you multiply it by 7. And then you take the other side, and you multiply it by 7, or whatever the number is. And so then I justify this by using NPO, the multiplication property of equality. And so then, this 7 and that 7 cancels, which is the whole point of multiplying by the 7. I am left only with an x on that side and a negative 14 there. Okay, so it looks like this is my answer. I'm going to double check, and I can check these mentally. Negative 14 plus 7 is indeed negative 2. So my answer is actually not x equals negative 14. My answer is actually just the negative 14. So here's how I want you to write it. You have two options. Option one is to write me a sentence that says the solution is, and then you just put whatever the number is. In this case, it's negative 14. And you put a little box around it and happy face it. So yay, my solution is negative 14. The alternate way is to use something called solution set notation, which basically just turns this sentence into a, um, into a mathematical expression. So the words, the solution, turn into a capital S. Is becomes an equals. And then I open up some curly Q braces and I stick whatever answer I get in there, which in this case is negative 14. Okay? And this is solution set notation. You can use this or you can use this. Um, and the reason why we use the second one is because sometimes you have very complicated equations that actually have more than one answer, and the only way to appropriately write them is in solution set notation or in sentence format. So this is what the work is going to look like. I want to see this, the step you use, the, uh, the property you use to justify that step, and then your answer. Okay, so let's look at an example of one where I have to use depot. All right, so when we have to use a division property of equality. So let's look at 3x, let's do negative 3x equals 16. So I look and see what's been done to x, and x has been multiplied by negative 3, and so I need to divide it by 3. And you have two options. Um, there is the unfortunate option of writing it like this, using the old school division symbol, which is a frowny face two hamster problem because if I choose to use the division symbol I have to put the side in parentheses and then I have to convert that to multiplication and then associate and then commute and blah, I don't want to do that. I want to keep this a one, one hamster problem because it's a one step equation. So here's the alternative and this is the one hamster happy way of doing this problem. I take the side and I divide it using the vinculum instead. Okay, as the, fr the fraction bar. Um, so what happens is the negative 3's cancel, and I'm just left with an x equals negative 16 over 3, and that's still just depot. It's easier to write it this way, and I get my answer of negative 16 thirds. And this is how I want to check these on the calculator, okay? So what I do is I type this equation in, or one half of the equation in, but where the x has been replaced with my answer. So negative 3 times uh, negative 16 divided by 3, and that better give me this other half of the equation, which is 16, and it does. Uh, so that means I checked it, and it's correct. And so now I can write my solution in solution set notation. And put my box around it, and happy face it. And know that happy face is deserved because that answer is correct. OK, so now let's look at addition and subtraction um, as posed. So let's look at um, one where I have to add a problem or add a number to, to solve it. So something like 
x minus 8 equals negative 10. So super basic. And it looks like a one hamster problem. But like this problem, it depends on how you write it. Okay? If I write it like um, I'm supposed to, what you're really supposed to do is you're supposed to take this side and you see it has a minus 8, so you want to add 8. So you have to add 8 to the entire side, which means I need to put it in parentheses. Okay? Um, because the addition property of equality tells me I have to treat each side equally. So that means add the parentheses, because that's literally how I show adding the 8 to, to both sides. Now, you have these parentheses that you need to take care of, which means you use, need to use the associative property. But you can't associate with subtraction. Um, oh no, I can foresee that this has now become a two hamster problem because what I have to do is use the definition of subtraction to transform that side and then I can associate and put the negative 8 plus the 8 and I get negative 10 plus an 8 and then I can add negative 8 plus 8 and get x plus 0 equals a negative 2 and then I get x equals negative 2. So one, two, three, four, five steps to do something that's really a one-step problem. Now, this is what you're supposed to do. This is a, a two-hamster example for one step. But you know what? I'm not going to make you do that. This, to me, is a one-hamster problem. It's a one-step equation. You should be able to solve it in one step. That means you're going to have to do something a little bit different. You're not going to do it the way you're supposed to do it. You're going to do a very strategic shortcut. Okay, so this is going to be, um, we're going to call this strategic, strategic addition slash subtraction. It is a shortcut that I'm going to allow you to make, all right? And here's the way it looks, and here's how I want you to show your work. If you choose to show your work in the same line, you got to do it this way. Um, if you do the work like I want you to, you're going to show the work going down the page and you're going to strategically add where you need to. And the reason why we can do this is because ultimately any subtraction can be turned into an addition. So whenever I have addition or subtraction in a line in their parentheses, I can always convert it and use the associative property and group things together that I need together. Um, if I had like a multiplication here with the addition or subtraction, I can't do this. It has to be something that's just added like this. So here's how this works. I'm going to put the plus 8 underneath the thing I want to get rid of. So I want to get rid of that minus 8, so I put it underneath the plus 8, or I put the plus 8 underneath it, and I just get left with an x, and then equaling a negative 2. And so that's the same answer, it's just in one step versus five step. One hamster problem versus two hamster problem. And I want a one-step equation to, to only require one hamster level of difficulty. So now I need to check this. Negative 2 minus 8 gives me negative 10. And so that is checked. So I can write my solution in set notation and put a box around it and a little happy face. So whenever you want to use APO or SPO, um, oh, by the way, this is APO. If I'm going to use APO or SPO, you're going to do it strategically and place it underneath the thing you want to add or subtract away. So we're just going to do one more example of the, of the one-steppers because I have to use an example that uses SPO. So if I have x plus 20 equals negative 159, I'm going to use my shortcut of that strategic addition or subtraction, and I'm going to subtract off 20 because I want to get rid of this plus 20. And I subtract off 20 there to treat both sides equally. That's gone. I am left with x equals negative 179. So then I want to check that and I'm going to use my calculator. Negative 179 plus 20 gives me negative 159. So that's been checked, and I can write my solution as negative 179. Box it off. Happy face. All right, so those are all the one-step equations. All right, so now let's look at the two-step equations. Now, two-step equations are also one hamster problems if you do them correctly. And here's how you're supposed to do them. Uh, you need to think of a two-step equation. And it, when I mean by a two-step equation, that means one step is going to be it's been multiplied, and one step is going to be that it's been uh, added or subtracted. So, for example, x over 3 plus 21 equals negative 5 is an example of a two-step equation because x has a 21 added to it and it's been divided by 3. 
And the way to keep this a one hamster problem and not turn it into a two hamster problem is to realize and remember that you are undoing whatever has been done to x. And so you're working backwards. So you need to do the order of operations backwards when you solve a two-stepper. Get rid of the plus 21 first, then get rid of the mul uh, multiply, or sorry, the divide by three. Okay, if you get rid of the multiply by three first, it becomes a two hamster problem. So let's put the two hamsters over here to show you what that's gonna look like. I'm not actually gonna solve it this way because I know better. I'm not gonna make this problem any worse than it, it already is. All right, so if I wanna multiply both sides by three, I have to put the entire side in parentheses and then I have to multiply both sides by the three. Um, and what that automatically does is it turns it into a distribution problem. So I use the multiplica uh, multiplication property of equality, but then I introduce the need to distribute. So this is frowny face. What I'm going to do instead is uh, I'm going to use my shortcut of strategic subtraction, and I'm going to subtract off the 21 first. Mr. Cardamom, please come to the main office. Mr. Cardamom, please come to the main office. All right, and so then from here, I have x over 3 equals negative 26. So what I'm going to do is uh, multiply both sides by 3. Sorry, put in parentheses. And those 3s cancel off, and I'm left with x equals whatever 3 times 26 is made negative, uh, negative 78. And so I want to check it. And so I have negative 78 divided by 3. I'm going to add a 21 and I get negative five. So that meant this is right. I can go back and supply my reasonings, my justifications, and then write my answer in solution set notation. So that's how you're gonna approach the two-step equations. Get rid of addition or subtraction first, and then multiply and divide second to keep it a one hamster difficulty problem.